Oh, nice. Now we may may still run into some errors, but hopefully it's giving you an idea of like how you can go back and forth and make it do what you want it to do. What I find is that it's almost like a dopamine hit. Yes. Yeah, this is amazing. This is, as you're saying, this is very addictive. It's really, it's like a video game or something. Once you get into it, it's got such a hook. Hello. In this video, we are following Paddy Srinivasan, CEO of DigitalOcean, as he starts building a stock trading app he's been planning. In the last video, you watched Paddy Vibe Ideate with ChatGPT, taking the idea from a loose concept to a product requirements document that outlines what to build and why. Now we are going to take that plan and actually start building. Paddy will be using C notes a SaaS starter kit from DigitalOcean that includes everything a typical SaaS app would need, from authentication, billing with Stripe, email with Resend, Gradient AI from DigitalOcean, and more. Now, Paddy's already forked the repo and has it running locally. Next, he's gonna bring in Claude inside Cursor so he can start planning and building the app, turning CNotes into Cfolio, a working stock tracker app. Let's jump in. Okay. So we had, uh, we generated this, if you remember, a few days ago. So the portfolio tracker, MVP features, learning mode, this is phase one app, phase two app, and so forth. So I think we have a pretty decent set of capabilities that we want to try today. I have the cursor with the C notes fork loaded. Why don't we start off with uh, installing Claude code? The next step would be getting your PRD into this and then paste. Okay, that it's installed now. So now let's type Claude, just the word Claude. Based on your preferences, it's giving you a few options to choose through. You can cycle through them up, down arrow, see which one you find better. This is how it's gonna show when it makes any code changes. This is how it will show you what's going in, what's going out. Then you wanna choose the first one. Just a fair warning. Whenever you start using Claude in a new directory, it's gonna give you this prompt, just a disclaimer of sorts. Okay, so I think Claude is ready. Type something like, what is this app about? And it should be able to review your app. Oh, nice. We can create a new file. So on the left side, you see all those files. You can collapse the application directory, just close that. And then click anywhere, yeah, just right click and say new file and maybe call this like prd.md. Uh, MD is the markdown format. It's a quick way to write without actually worrying about the formatting. So the formatting is taken care. If you do a hash and then type, that becomes a h1 tag. Two hashes will be h2 tags and then things like that. Now we can go back to chat GPT and uh, copy that prd. Just paste it there, yeah. Okay, it didn't copy the markdown. Maybe what we can do is um, in Claude, if you want to reference any file in Claude, you can reference that file by just typing at and then the name of the file. And then we can have prd.md. And if you hit tab, it's going to select that. And then you can say something like, can you review this and turn this into a markdown file? Okay, so it's showing you what it's gonna change. Anytime you're making any changes, Claude's gonna give you this choice of, do you want me to just ask you the next time or should I just keep doing stuff without asking you for approvals? So we'll keep it, um, so it's asking for approval, at least for now, till we get confident that it's on the right track. So use the first option, yes, okay. And now it's converted that into a nicely formatted PRD for us, a uh, markdown for us. So as you can see, it's got like three hashes. That's the H3 tags. If this looks good, then we can ask it something along the lines of, here's a PRD for Cfolio. And I want you to review this PRD. And then I want to convert C notes into Cfolio. Can you come up with a plan for this? At any point when you're typing into Claude, if you do shift tab, you will switch modes for uh, Claude. So instead of executing, we, we want to be in plan mode. So once more, shift tab, and now it's on plan mode. So in this mode, it's going to just keep inter interacting with you. It's not going to make any changes. And once you're ready, then you can say that, yes, let's switch mode and start executing. And now we can hit enter. Is my prompt good, good enough? Yeah, I think it's good. Let's see what it comes up with and we'll take it from there.
Another thing you can probably do is uh, you can drag this whole terminal into the tabs above. So if you drag from bash, yeah, just drag that up next to the prd.md file and it'll just open that in a new tab. So it just gives you a bit more real estate. And then we can close that uh, sidebar that we had for cursor chat. We're now going to use that. Yeah. So the pro plan for cursor gives you access to a few models limit, but we are not using cursor chat now. We are using Claude. I normally keep cursor chat just as a backup, just in case I want another opinion from another model. And um, cursor chat is to chat with cursor. And we have now installed Claude code into Cursor, and the chat is going directly to Claude, right? Not going yes. via Cursor. So uh, to be honest, we are doing this inside Cursor because Cursor gives you this built-in terminal, but you could essentially open PowerShell right now and type Claude into it, and you have the exact same Claude experience in that. So it's actually running inside the terminal, not as much inside Cursor using uh, Claude inside Cursor because I still have a visual outline of That's what right. changes it. I like using uh, Claude inside Cursor because I still have a visual outline of what changes it's making to the files. I can explore the file directory. Uh, and once it's done, I think what, one of the things we should do is like really try to zero in from the perspective of how would you go about making decisions about those user stories? What does that MVP look like for you? Now that you're able to move fast with all of the AI and LLMs available, what kind of hat would you put on to as you're going through all of this? So it just came up with all of this. So I'd be also curious to see how you are thinking through this. Does this plan look right to you? Okay, let's see what it... Okay. Oh, so all this while it came up with the plan, okay, to transform this app. Mm -hmm. Transform the current CNotes application into Cfolio, a portfolio tracking application by adapting existing architecture while preserving the solid foundation of authentication, billing, and service layer patterns. Note model with portfolio related models, database schema updates, okay. API layer transformation, portfolio management, CRUD operations for the holdings, transaction tracking, watch list. Oh, wow, this is amazing. Service layer. Oh, so it's introducing a few new services, which makes sense. It's going to get some market data, calculate portfolio, all that stuff. Okay. So at this point, you can either accept the edits or you can say no, and you can keep planning. You can go back and forth. Like, can you change that part to this? Or if you had any of those suggestions. No, let's go with this. Okay. So I would still say, let's do the second one, a bit of handholding. And at this point, you could also bring in, if you had any mock-ups, if you wanted to give up some guidance, like this is the general look and feel of the UI I like, or you can give examples. Hey, I like the Morgan Stanley picker or something like that, right? You can give it some inspirational stuff. Okay, just uh, made some more updates. Let's see what it's doing. What is the number of hours? What is it saying? I think it's just saying that that's the human hours that it's going to take. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it's starting by creating a comprehensive to-do list for us. At this point, what I uh, normally also do is that I'm going to ask it like, okay, so if you were to come up with an MVP, what does that MVP look like? And uh, what do the user stories look like? And let's start with one specific user story. Yeah, we had it in the MRD, uh, okay. right? So we had the MVP features of Portfolio Tracker. Yeah. So I don't know if it is going to use this or... It should. I'm curious if it if it can give us some user stories and if they, these user stories match with what you had in mind for the customer. What's the audience for this? If the customer is the only audience that's using this system or there's like an agent or a portfolio manager sort of person uh, personas <clears throat> that's a good question so let's go back. we had the um, ideal customer profile here um, i think it is both the re retail self-directed retail investors are the the primary and then advanced versions of the same investors okay. which persona would you want to start off with and then we can guide it along those lines i think prosumer self-directed prosumer all right let's do that and then I'm, i'd be curious what kind of user stories it comes up with I would like to um, also add a feature, which is um, a mock portfolio that we can simulate back in time. Yeah, you can add. Oh, okay. So it added what if scenarios, what if I had invested $1,000 in EV stocks in Jan 2020? Okay, great. So maybe now what we can say is that, okay, let's uh, break this down by phases, user stories and tasks or something along those lines. 
what is the context of a phase when it comes to vibe coding? Because it's going to do it all now, right? Yeah, so we actually want to make it a bit more controlled environment for it. We want it to start by phase and then stop so we can test it after every phase. And then if there were any Git commits we want to do at that point, we will do the Git commit so we have a versioning. So we wanted to slow it down a little bit so we have a bit more control over it. But you're right, it can actually attempt to do all of it, but the results will not be as satisfactory it'll still go a bit off the rails or it can go off the rails if you give it like too large a task okay all right let's just review this quickly holy cow yeah this is great okay so can i say let's get started with phase one so one more thing i normally do is i don't want to lose this this is like really critical so i ask it to add all of this to a file called plan.md so we can always review it and then once that is done, then we can be like, okay, let's start with the phase one and execute all the tasks on it one by one. Now, I, I said file.md, I want to... Yeah, you can say no and then uh, rename. This is like having a, an assistant, right? Absolutely. Okay, I'm curious to see. Uh, okay. okay. So now we can say something like, okay, let's start with phase one. Pause after phase one so we can test. Okay, let's do this. Moment of truth. Moment of truth. At any point, you can press Control T, so it'll give you the exact to-do list it's tracking. You can say yes on this one. It says allow all edits. I would still say yes. Sometimes you you realize oh it's not going the right direction. Okay, so here's your to-do list that it's gonna go one by one. Oh, nice. It's updating the model. C notes was a note model, so what it's doing is it's really changing the database. This is really good to. Um keep a tab on what is actually happening yeah it's a great learning experience too if you just let it run you don't see what's happening behind the scenes exactly cd application okay and just under the command it also tells you what exactly that command is going to do so it's creating that database migration for us to go from c notes to c folio what exactly is the database migration? So it's just renaming the database and uh, updating the schema. Is that what it's calling as migration? Yeah. So the schema for notes, uh, for example, would include things like what's the note name? Is there a description for the who's the author of the note? In this one, it's migrating the database. So the columns, the field names, the kind of schema that we have, all of that is getting migrated. Yeah. So it found some error. It's going to try to resolve that. This is a good example of where it would have gone off the rails had we not caught it. It's trying to find the database locally for us. We don't have a local database. We already have the database in DigitalOcean. So we should stop it and say we already have the DigitalOcean database. Don't try to do this locally. We, you can say that we already have the database ready to go on DigitalOcean and that the .env file has that. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Still making those changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, adding the uh, names of the tables that it's going to create for us. Okay, it's adding portfolio, holding, and portfolio type. Those are the new tables it's creating, and it's going to remove the note and all of that stuff. It's still making all of the database related changes, so you can just say yes. All right, I think now it's going to add that API or service that it's going to build to get that data. Oh, nice. This is awesome. Yeah. So one thing that we did not specify, and I think we'll either come up with a suggestion or we'll have to guide it, is how is it going to get that data, real-time data, what API or service it should be using for that. Oh, it's using Alpha Vantage. Okay. So it's adding some of these uh, routes for the API that we'll be using. Yeah. So once that is done, I think the next one, you'll start to see some visual changes once it starts to convert the dashboard. Okay, one done. Yeah, if you feel, uh, Patty, you can just say yes, allow all the next time if you just wanted to speed through a little bit. Okay, and how long will it? So this session, we can always kill the session. Uh, it'll lose that. Uh, it did something. It's ready for front-end development now. Okay, it's included some mock data for popular stocks. We can now build the UI components. So it's looking for that yes from you now. If you hit escape twice, yeah, and then try that. I think it was output style, yeah. There we go. Oh, interesting. Learning. Yeah, learning. Oh, this is nice. I'm super curious to see how it does this. And now you can say yes. 
it's waiting for that confirmation from you. Ready to continue with the UI or would you like to test the API points first? Let's just build the UI and we can come back. Once you uh, start playing around with this on your own, Patty, uh, I'd be curious how you feel about this because I'm, what I find is that it's almost like a dopamine hit when you see that, oh, it's it did that. Okay, you know what? Just one more thing. Just one more thing and I'll get out. I have literally um, not slept sometimes because I started building something before bed and then I was like, one more. One more check mark, one more check mark. And then I'm about to fall asleep and I'm like, I wonder if it's done. Maybe I should maybe I should just check it real quick. And it's really it's like a video game or something. Once you get it, yeah. it's got such a hook. It's really it's dangerous, <laughs> honestly. Yeah, hopefully, Patty, you, you can uh, also use it a little bit on your own just to explore. Um, but uh, yeah, I feel like this is finally getting into the fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Is it looking for some input from us? Can you type something like continue and stay if it takes it? I wonder if that output uh, style has actually overridden and it's actually stopping and giving you guidance. Oh, yeah. So it's saying your task. Yeah. So this has become a bit more learn by doing sort of thing. Oh, I see. Can we switch back? Yeah. Let's just, you can escape and then output style. Default. Default. Oh, very interesting. So I'm going to play around with a bunch of different things now. Yeah, me too. This is, uh, even the other option looked interesting, where it was giving a bit more verbose explanation. I think that could be interesting also. All right, here we go. C stocks has been named to C folio. My notes is my portfolios now. Okay, let's do it. It's starting the server now. So we can say yes to that. Okay, let's click on that local host. Sweet. Let's cl click around and see uh, if you're able to get these buttons to work. Okay, try the other button, see if that is working. Okay, so the UI is not completely functional. Let's go back to it. Now it's a matter of us playing around with it and asking it to fix things. I would say something like, hey, that create your first portfolio button is not working. Can you check what's, what's happening? <laughs> so I think it went into that learning mode. Uh, so the one thing that we wanted to try Ah, it was a to-do human. <laughs> Let's try again. If you go back to the browser. Oh, nice. Now we may, may still run into some errors, but hopefully it's giving you an idea of like how you can go back and forth and make it do what you want it to do. Okay. Let's do a refresh just to make sure it's saving to the database. Yeah. Uh, let's test this button. Okay, so it's, I'm guessing it's not implemented that either. Oh, so it created it, it just never imported it. And just for context, uh, Patty, when they when it says component, uh, it means that it's using React as a framework, which is a front-end framework. And each of these pieces are essentially components. So each of these have different files that are getting maintained. So they become modular and it's easier to update. I see. Yeah, I can play around with this. I think we've covered quite a bit uh, in this one. The fact that you were logged in, you are able to add stuff to the database. I, I do expect you to get some dopamine hits over the weekend. <laughs> so let us know how that goes. Yes. Yeah, this is amazing. This is, as you're saying, this is very addictive. So that's where we'll wrap this one up. In this session, Paddy took the PRD he had created earlier and started vibe building turning CNodes, our SaaS starter kit, into the foundations of Cfolio, a stock trading app. By the end of this session, he's got the core structure running locally and he's ready to expand with new features and data. In the next video, we'll keep building on that plan and start adding more functionality to Cfolio, step by step. Thanks for watching. Let's keep building.